Senator from Washington, Ms. Cantwell, proposes an amendment numbered 595. On page 119, strike line 21 and all that follows through page 125, line 11, and insert the following. Madam President, I ask that the reading be dispensed with. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, simply, uh, my amendment restores section 18 of the uh, language that was passed out of the United States Senate, so it basically implements the Senate language. Uh, Madam President, I come to the floor today and with much respect for my colleagues, uh, Chairman Leahy, who's worked on this legislation for many, many years, and my colleagues on other sides of the aisle who have tried to work on this important legislation and move it forward. I am sure it has been challenging. And I mean no offense to my colleagues uh, about this legislation. It's simply my perspective about where we need to go as a country and how we get there. I'm excited that we live in an information age. In fact, one of the things that I count uh, very fortunate in my life is the fact that this is the age that we live in. I often think that if I lived in the agrarian age and maybe I uh, would uh, be farming and that is also of great interest given the state of Washington's interest in agriculture or maybe I would live in the industrial age and when new factories were being built and that would be interesting but I love the fact, love the fact that whether you're talking about agriculture whether you're talking about automotive, whether you're talking about health care, whether you're talking about software, whether you're talking about communications, whether you're talking about space travel, whether you're talking about aviation, we live in an information age where innovation is created every single day. In fact, we are transforming our lives in a much more rapid pace than any other generation because of all that transformation. So I love the fact that the United States has been an innovation leader and I love the fact that the state of Washington has been an innovation leader. If one thing I pride myself on is representing a state that has continued to pioneer new technology and new innovations. So when I look at this patent bill, I look at whether we are going to help the process in making innovation happen at a faster rate or more products and services to help us in all of those industries I just mentioned, or whether we're going to gum up the wheels of the patent process. And so, yes, I join my colleagues who've been out here on the Senate floor, uh, like Senator Feinstein and others who debated this issue of changing our patent system to the first to file, which will disadvantage inventors, because first to file will lead to big companies and organizations getting uh, the ability to have patents and to slow down innovation. If you look at what Canada and Europe has done, I don't think anybody in the world market today says, oh my gosh, let's change to the Canadian system because they have created incredible innovation or let's look to Europe because their first to file has created such innovation. In fact, when Canada switched to this first to file system, it actually slowed down the number of patents filed. So I have that concern about this legislation, but we've had that discussion here on the Senate floor. I know my colleague is going to come to the floor and talk about fee diversion, which is the fact that the Patent Office actually collects money on patents, a very uh, viable way to make the Patent Office effective and efficient because it can take the money that it collects from these patents and use it to help speed up the process of verifying these patents and awarding them. But the Senate chose good action on this issue and good measure and simply said that the money collected by the Patent Office should stay in the Patent Office budget. But, Madam President, that's not what the House has done. The House has allowed that money to be diverted into other areas of appropriations and the consequence will be that this patent reform bill will basically be taking the economic engine away from the patent office and spreading it out across government and so the reforms that we would seek in patents to make it a more expeditious process is also going to get slowed down. So Madam President, I could spend my time here today talking about those two things and my concerns about that, but that's not even really why I'm here this morning. 
I'm here to talk about how this legislation has a rifle shot earmark in it for a specific industry to try to curtail the validation of a patent by a particular company. That's right, it's an earmark rifle shot to try to say that banks no longer have to pay a royalty to a particular company that has been awarded a patent and has been upheld in court decisions to continue to be paid that royalty. So that's why I'm here this morning. And you would say, well, she's objecting to that earmark. She's objecting to that personal approach to that particular industry uh, giveaway in this bill. Well, actually, Madam President, uh, I'm concerned about that, but what I'm concerned about is the way that they have drafted this language to benefit the big banks of America and screw a little innovator is basically drafted so broadly that I'm worried that other technology companies are going to get swept up in the definition and their patents are also going to be thrown out as invalid. That's right, Madam President. Every state in the United States could have a company that under this language could now have someone determine that their patent is no longer viable even though the patent office has awarded them a patent. That's right. Companies who have revenue streams from royalties who are operating their companies could now have their bank financing everything pulled out from under them because they no longer have a royalty stream. That's right. Businesses could lay off people. Businesses could shut down. All because we put in broad language in the House version that exacerbates a problem that was in the Senate version to begin with. Now, I could say that, you know, this is all a process and legislation follows a process, but I object to this process, Madam President. I object to that this language that benefits the big banks was never debated in the committee of jurisdiction, the Judiciary Committee. It was not debated. It was not voted on. It was not discussed there. It was put into the manager's amendment, which was brought to the Senate floor with little or no debate because people wanted to hurry and get the manager's amendment adopted. Now, I objected to that process in driving this language because I was concerned about it, sought a colloquy at that point in time and was not able to get one from any of my colleagues and so opposed this legislation. Well, now this legislation has been made even worse in the House of Representatives by saying that this language, which would nullify patents, that's right, the United States Senate would be participating in nullifying patents that the Patent Office has already given to companies, can now go on for eight years. Eight years is what the language says when it comes back from the House of Representatives. So, Madam President, all I'm asking my colleagues to do today is go back to the Senate language that you passed. Go back to the Senate language that at least says this earmark that you're giving to the big banks so they can invalidate a patent by a company because you don't like the fact that you have to pay a royalty on check imaging processing to them. I'm sorry that you don't like to pay the royalty. But when somebody innovates and makes a technology, they have the right to charge a royalty. You've been paying that royalty. I'm sorry, big banks, if you don't like paying that royalty anymore. Um, uh, you are making a lot of money. But to try to come to the United States Senate with an earmark rifle shot and X out that competition because you don't want to pay for that technology is not the way the United States Senate should be operating. And the fact that the language is so broad that it will encompass other technologies is what really has me concerned. If all my colleagues want to vote for this special favor for the big banks, go ahead. But the fact that you are going to basically pull us in to having other companies covered under this is a big concern. And the section that I'm concerned about is business method patents and 
The term covered business method patents means patents or claims a method or, or corresponding apparatus for performing data processing or other operations. Or other operations. What does or other operations mean? How many companies in America will have their patent challenged because we don't know what or other operations mean? How many? How many inventors will have their technology basically found null and void by the court process or the patent office process because of this confusing language? So, Madam President, I'm here to ask my colleagues to do a simple thing, revert back to the Senate language. It's not a perfect solution. If I had my way, I'd strip the language out altogether. If I had my way, I would have much more clarity and predictability to the patent lawyers and patent office so that the next three or four years won't be spent in chaos between this change in the patent business method language and the whole process that's going to go on. Instead, we would be moving forward with predictability and certainty. So I asked my colleagues to just help <clears throat> this process, help this process move forward by going back to the Senate language. I know that uh, my colleagues probably want to hurry and get this process done, but I guarantee you this language with the Senate version can easily go back to the House of Representatives and be passed. What I ask my colleagues to think about is how many companies are also going to get caught in this process by the desire of some to help the big banks get out from under something the courts have already said they don't deserve to get out of. So I hope that we can bring closure to this issue. And I hope that we can move forward on something that gives Americans the idea that people here in Washington, D.C. are standing up for the little guy. We are standing up for inventors. We are standing up for those kind of entrepreneurs and we are not spending our time putting earmark rifle shot language into legislation to try to assuage large entities that are well on their way of taking care of themselves. So, Madam President, I yield the floor and reserve the balance of my time and hope that uh, if my colleagues have any questions on this language as it relates to their individual states, that they would contact our office and we'd be happy to share information with them. I thank the President and I yield the floor.